Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me as you do. Okay, Video Studio X10 has been launched, and as always, they've asked me to do a review, so here it is, the review on version 10. So first off, we get a brand new tab at the top called the Welcome, and what this does, it just, it's an easy way for them to communicate to us. If we go and watch new, it gives you a brief uh, rundown of what everything is in the version 10. It even gives you tutorials on how to use it and get more what else is going on and what else have they got to offer. Okay, that's pretty cool, I guess. All right, let's keep moving. Let's go into the Edit tab, and that's where all the fun stuff is. So straight off, we get two new icons here, Remapping or Time Remapping and Mask Creator. So let's have a look at the Mask Creator and see how easy it is. So let's highlight the clip, Mask Creator. Okay, so I've got here options of using masking tools, and for this tutorial, or well, for the preview, I want to change this white background to a red background. So let's just do that. So what I'm going to do is mask the object that I want to keep. And everything that is not masked, well, that's going to disappear, I guess. All right, so I'm going to do this pretty rough because uh, I'm, I'm, I don't want to show you how awesome I am doing masking. I just want to show you how easy it is to use the masking tool in version 10. So I can use different objects to help me do this mask whatever gets me going faster, but I might go back to the pen. Now you can change the brush size if you want to make this even more professional. In theory, you should have just used a, a very fine, fine pen or brush size to, uh, anyway, you'll see what I mean. It's gonna look pretty crappy, but you'll get the idea. <laughs> All right, so once I'm happy with it, which totally am, and then I press okay, so it drops a new clip on the overlay track and I can then just change the background. So I'm gonna look for a red pattern or red color. There it is, I'll highlight the clip I do not want and voila, there you go. So you can see I've really blown over the edges, but it doesn't matter because it's a review, right? So now I've easily changed the white to the red. Now this can also be done on a video. So you're gonna have a lot of fun using masks. And if you've been following me for a while, you always had to use Boris Graffiti, but no longer you can use this very simple interface to do what you want. Cool, huh? All right, let's keep moving. What else we got? Well, let's see time remapping. All right, what is that all about? Okay, let's have a look. Here we go. All right, so this is something I was using before, but I want to show you <laughs> how to use it, okay? So highlight your clip now. If you go into the edit tools, they're all here. Uh, all your variable speeds are already here. And what they've done, they've just put it all together in one easy to use window. So here you go. So you can increase or decrease the speed, ease in, out, freeze frame it, take a photo, whatever you want, and then you can play it. And then what it does here, wherever you decide to increase the speed or whatever, and then decrease the speed, it will just keep setting uh, keyframes for that. And once you're happy with that, you press OK. And then it changes your video speed at every point that you've made the adjustment. And it adds it up in here, as you can see now. So if I actually took that out and put that in, you'll see that now I've got three clips because I made three different sections. So the clip plays normal, the clip plays slow, the clip plays fast, and then if you wanted to, you can just adjust those individual clips again. So that's pretty cool, if you ask me. It makes it so much easier to use or to do time remapping, right? Right, okay. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we got. Oh, look at that. It's, uh, we have a really small window now <laughs> because of my big video. Never mind, as a professional, you'll overlook this poor ass attempt of doing a, uh, a review, right? <laughs> All right, let's keep going, fit the screen. All right, what am I showing you here as well? I'm showing you how easy it is to use transparency. So now, if you see this window, uh, this uh, film reel icon, if I wanted to, just to bring this into in and out and fade it out, I can right click on it and I've got this thing here called track transparency. Okay, so if I wanted to, I can go along my timeline I can add a keyframe here. I can add another keyframe here. And then watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add one in the middle. Now you got here 100 to zero. So I'm gonna pull that right down to zero. And then if I play it, you'll see that one clip will fade in. And then the other clip comes out and then back to the original clip. So I'm, I'm all, well, I've created a uh, crossfade, haven't I? And that's what the uh, 
transparency option does. If I like it, I press the escape key, uh, like so. So now that is in effect. Look at that. Now I can do that with videos if I wanted to. If I have two individuals left and right and I want one to start to come in and fade out, I can do that as well. You, you'll figure it out. You'll have lots of fun with this transparency window, but the option is there and it's very simple to use. So let's keep moving. Okay. All right, 360. This is pretty cool. I've been really excited to show you this. I'm going to have to show you a video first. So I'm going to bring it in from the other window. So here is a video on YouTube, 360. If you don't know what it is, it allows the, the, the viewer to pan and pan around to see what they really wanted to see. So even while the video plays, so here's just a, a demo of a plane taking off, right? Well, you can take that video and you can import that into Video Studio and I'll show you what happens. So here it is. I'm going to go to the part where the plane is. So it's going to look like this in your preview window, which is pretty weird, right? <laughs> But I'm going to turn this into a normal video, but I'm going to edit or pan the things that I want to see. So right click and you'll see a 360 video. I'm going to turn this into a standard video. I get a new interface. So let's go along to the point where, so right now you'll see here's a mark. And if I move this mark to say this individual here, this co-pilot, now the focus is on him. And if I wanted to, I can then move this back and then it's onto the pilot. I hope that's the pilot. And then I can move it and I can bring that back into the center. So here you can see I've then created three key points. And I've also got these options here, but there I'll show you what they do later. Not today, but in another tutorial. So as I now play it, I'm gonna press uh, play here. Watch what happens. Let me just move this a little bit closer so we don't sit there and look at it for five minutes. Press play. Now it'll pan over to him because that's what I want it. As to the co-pilot, and then it should pan back over to the pilot in any second. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. So now I'm basically editing inside the movie itself. And then it'll go right back to the middle because that's the last setting that I set. And here we go. There you go. So now I'm back to the center because now I'm controlling what the 360 video or parts of the 360 videos that I wanted to see. If I'm happy with everything, I press OK. And voila, now it's turned it back into... Yep, it's now all just a normal video, and I am now the editor or the director of my new video. So that's pretty cool, right? Yay! Okay, what else we got? Okay, I'm going to show you something really simple what they've done. Uh, I'll bring these two little stills back in. So let's say I wanted to work on this, and I wanted to add a, uh, an effect to both of them. What I can do is I'll show you. Uh, just make this fit the screen. Here you go. I can group these now. If I hold my shift key and then I right click, I can now group it. So any effect that I add to this, uh, let's doesn't matter what it is. Uh, let's go to all and active cam, right? It'll add it automatically to both clips or to the group that I have. See how it's got an FX, that means there's a, a filter in there. And if I then move it, it would shake. So if I did the transparency as well, they will be timed correctly because I've, I've added the, the FX filter and the clip at the same time. So I don't have to sit there and guess, oh, is, this the right, is this the right time? Don't worry about it, it's grouped. If I don't, excuse me, if I don't like it, I can ungroup it and then just be on my way. So that's pretty cool. It just, again, it just helps you with your workflow, I guess. Stops you messing around and guessing half the stuff. All right, now here comes the good stuff. If you've been following me, I hope you have, and you've seen I've done a lot of tutorials on Boris Graffiti. Well, guess what they've got now? I'm just gonna, gonna grab a clip, it doesn't matter what it is. FX filters, look at this, they've got this BCC Title Studio. It is also part of Boris, but it's part of the, the Continuum package, and the Continuum package is their, uh, their elite. This is the top of the range stuff that they offer. So let's drop that on my timeline. You can see what it does. It's a title effect, but it's a 3D title effect builder. Double click, customs filter. So this is the main, this is the, the basic interface. And as you can see, look at this. It has got some really cool stuff. <laughs> All right. It has got some absolutely awesome stuff that you can play with here. So this is, uh, sorry about that. There you go. 
Now, this is just the, the uh, intro video, uh, intro screen. You can go even further into the advanced screen. Look at this. Now we're really playing with some stuff here. So if you ever use Boris Graffiti, then this will look pretty familiar with you. So you don't have to be scared of what this animal is. But I'll tell you what, this is a very, very powerful plugin, and it's from the Catinium Complete range. And I'm absolutely excited about this because you can have so much fun creating some awesome titles. And you can even manipulate a few objects into your videos like I did with the graffiti. Okay, so that's pretty cool, all right? Yay, everybody goes wild. Okay, settle down, settle down. All right, what else we got? Okay, not one. Oh, I did, what did I do? I was trying to delete it. I didn't do that. Not one, but they've gave you two title builders. Now, this is the new blue titler from T uh, Pro. And this is also a very, very cool, but super easy to use title builder here. So I'll give you a quick example. Like, let's go to styles over here. And look at this. Look at that. Instantly, I can change it. Oh, look at that. It's pretty cute. So here we go, I like that. And so I can, I can apply that, whatever I see, let's just apply that onto the timeline like this. And now that's permanent, I can press okay. And now look at that, now I've got this funky looking green text on my title of pro. And again, I can go into here and I can completely change the attributes of everything that I want. And it's very simple to use, just like, uh, well, yeah, just like anything. Here is the, the attributes windows. And it's all done with sliders. Look at that. That's all it is. See, you can just change the sliders and, and have lots of fun. This is a drop-down shadow that I'm moving. And again, I, I will show you how to use how to use this properly. And you can have a ton of fun with this. And, and again, you can be so creative in making some intros to your videos. Okay, let's press that. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so let's keep going. Now, I can't show you this, but uh, again, I will have to show you something else. Uh, Okay, so now they've got they've added a new codec here. Let me just bring this up here. High efficiency video coding. Okay, this one HEVC, and you're saying mm, right. Okay, so I own a Phantom 4, which is a drone, and it shoots in 4K resolution. But the problem is when I bring it into the video editors, they can't play it because the resolution is so high and it struggles because the codec can't read it. Well, this my friends can read 8K. So if if I have 8K uh, codecs that it can easily read 4K as well, right? And yes, that's what it does. So now I can bring in my uh, Phantom 4 footage into Video Studio and I can then edit it. And I couldn't do that before because it just simply couldn't run it. And I had to get, I had to look for a new codec and add it in and use something else to edit it. Now I don't have to worry about that because it is now part of Video Studio X10. And that's pretty cool, yay. All right, uh, what else we got? Well, let's see. I think this is the last thing I could show you. Score fitter, which is here. So what's score fitter? Well, if you use here the auto music, then you can add any ambient classical music that you want. You can then add it to your timeline, which then fits it perfectly to the length of your clip. And that's pretty cool. So what they've just done is increase the library to give you a lot more to work with. And that always is handy to have when you're trying to do a small project and you're trying to get the right music to fit the right length. Because trust me, I make a lot of videos and it's very annoying to get the right music and then also get the right length. Well, Score Fitter does it all for you. It even fits it all in, it fades it in, it fades it out for you at the right positioning at the right time. So that's what is now uh, available with the new Score Fitter or the new X10. So there you go, my friends. I'll quickly show you the difference between. Um, Pro X10 and the Ultimate, so as you can see, just quickly here, you get 2,000 effects compared to 1,500. Uh, you, with the Ultimate, you get the Ultimate Collection, which is the Boris, the Pro Dad, the filters that I just showed you. Uh, you get uh, four cameras instead of six cameras in the uh, with the Ultimate, so that's pretty cool to have. There's not a huge difference between version of the Ultimate and the Pro, but if you want those really cool filters that I just showed you, then I think it's definitely worth it just for the few different dollars that it costs between the Ultimate and Pro to go for it and get a way more effects and therefore you have way more cre creativity at your fingertips. So there you go, my friends. I, I'm pretty sure I've probably left out a whole plethora of other <laughs> new features, but I've covered the main ones and that's what we're all interested in. So there you go. All right, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed my review. So as always, thanks for watching.